Good morning. Welcome. Listen, we are so excited. If you are brand new with us, whether online or in person, our church has undergone this incredible challenge of reading through the entire scriptures in three years. And so we find ourselves today closing Deuteronomy. Wow, what a journey it has been. We only have, I believe it's three weeks or four weeks left of Heartstrong Season 4, uh, where we will end in Joshua. And I love the story of Joshua. But before we get into Joshua's story, we're going to recap and close off the story of Moses. And so if you've been with us over the last little bit, we've read through the entire New Testament. We started in the book of Genesis. We completed Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And today we will finish the Torah with Deuteronomy. Last week, uh, once again, just to honor, I know he's not in the room right now, uh, but want to honor Pastor Sam and the incredible message that he brought last week when it came to prophecy. Uh, We really talked about how it was important for us when it comes to the gift of prophecy to find ourselves in a position of humility. Right? To not take for granted the opportunity that we have to speak on behalf of the Lord. But really when it comes to all the spiritual gifts, we need to be doing this. As we conclude Deuteronomy today, we actually want to rewind uh, into the book of Exodus. So if you have your Bible with you, uh, you can turn to Exodus, we'll be starting in Exodus chapter 3, uh, verses 4. Exodus chapter 3, verses 4. Now why are we going back? Because today in our readings of Deuteronomy, as we close out... Uh, Uh, this incredible book that will be the fifth and final book of the Torah, we will watch as the leadership responsibility shifts from Moses, who has been with us since Exodus, to Joshua, whose story we will read about in just a short amount of time. And it's important for us as we dig into the story of Joshua and as we see the handing over of the leadership of Moses to celebrate a story well lived. As we journey through the Torah, we have seen Moses in connection and and, in conjunction with God, that he has seen many uh, incredible spiritual victories. He's also had spiritual hardships. But even at the very end, the people of Israel would have loved for Moses to continue into the promised land with him. This was a leader worth following. And so today, as we conclude this story, we're actually going to rewind to see how it was that Moses was called to this position of leadership. Because not only was he a leader by position, he was a leader through anointing. There's, a potent, there's an understanding of spiritual authority that we need to grasp today as we read through the story of Moses. See, spiritual authority and spiritual leadership is different than normal leadership. It doesn't come through education. It doesn't simply come through position. But spiritual authority is only given and is only received through the indwelling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every Christian is called to lead in whatever capacity that God has placed us in. If you're here today and you are a parent, you are called to lead. If you are here today and you function in a workplace, you are called to lead. If you are here this morning and God has surrounded you with those who don't know Jesus yet, You're called to lead. But each and every one of us will be called to lead in a different capacity. And some of the spiritual authority that God gives uh, really comes down to the place of intimacy with him. How do we anoint? How do we know who we are supposed to follow? Well, we follow Christ first. And after Christ, then we follow the leaders that he appoints. Terry Walling puts it this way, spiritual authority is the influence God grants a leader. And it is something in which every leader must participate. Spiritual authority is the byproduct of a life lived in intimacy and dependency on Christ. Let's pray this morning. God, I pray that you would give us the ears to hear today. Lord, humble our hearts today, Lord, as we center ourselves on your word. God, I pray this morning that we would position ourselves to be ready to receive whatever authority that you would have for this church. God, I think even as Life Center as a whole, Lord Jesus, across all of our campuses. God, as we were uh, at Strong Conference this week, and as now we begin to shift towards the Christmas season and then Hard and Easter, God, we are aware that you are on the move here in the city. And so, God, I pray that you would begin to shift the authority even that you've given us as a body here in Canada. Lord, may we be a lighthouse. 
for those who are seeking to know more of who you are. So God, humble us today. Remind us today of who we truly are in your name. And we ask that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Unlike other authorities, spiritual authority is never produced or gained through self-promotion or position, but it is cultivated as one develops Christ-like character. Now, every follower of Jesus should desire to hear from this, this one thing from him on that fateful day. Matthew 25, verses 23a. Well done, my good and faithful servant. But here is our current challenge, one which Moses has to face at the end of Deuteronomy. We need more Christians today to finish well, to accomplish what God has entrusted us with. One of my mentors uh, just last week as I was speaking to him said, you know, we're living in the day where it is a little bit uh, 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 dangerous to read the books of people and Christian leaders who are still alive now. And we began to walk through some of the different authors who even since I have really stepped into the position of Christian leadership have experienced great fall who were uh, at one point elevated into these positions of respect and authority and now we don't even mention their names. We don't really read their books. Church, I want to encourage you today that it is our desire as a part of Life Center to continually humble ourselves before him. May no one's singular name in this congregation ever be raised above Jesus. Actually, one of the greatest desires of our hearts as we seek to dive into leadership, as we seek to lead people into a right relationship with God, should be that as we walk into their story, whatever uh, page that may look like or chapter that we may be available to step in there for, that our desire is, God, even if they don't remember me, as long as they see you, then I'm okay. See, church, this is what it is that God has called us to. One of the encouragements that I left Strong Conference with last week that you'll hear me say time and time again, almost as a reminder even to myself as I stand here today with uh, hands free. Look at me, right? This is crazy. Even as we stand here today is to remind ourselves that we are not the main characters of this story. We're going to talk about Moses and how he positioned himself to receive the spiritual authority that God was looking to give him. But Moses is not the main character of Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. Through the Holy Spirit, he is given the uh, uh, traditionally given the attribute of authoring those books. But the true author of all scripture is God. And Moses' story is only beautiful, it's only memorable, it's only something to be uh, mirrored and, 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 and sought after because of God. And as with Moses, let it also be with us. May we only be worth following because God is at the center. In order to truly embrace what it is that God wants to do in our midst and only to truly embrace the spiritual authority that God wants to uh, bestow to each and every one of us, there are four areas and postures that we need to assume. Surrender, alignment, brokenness, and vulnerability. Looking at Moses, let's see how God begins to grow these things in, in spiritual authority in his life. Exodus starts with a generational story of good and evil. Israel and his family go to Egypt during the famine and receive provision when Joseph is second in command. This is good. You fast forward into the book of Exodus and a new Pharaoh who doesn't know Joseph or his family sees the children of Israel multiplying in number as a threat and not a blessing. He enslaves and sends out a decree that all the Hebrew baby boys should be killed. This is evil. Like every story, like every good story, the story of Moses begins with that thread of rescue and salvation. We see unmerited, Moses is powerless, but through the actions of another, he is saved. God's redemption story is unfolding in the story of Moses, and it's tied to the stories of Joseph, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, who we've read about in Heartstrong as we journey through the book of Genesis, all of whom are tied to God. Posture one is surrender. Our story doesn't start with us, so it shouldn't be all about us. 
Surrender is the opposite of the desire for control. Amen. Surrender is the opposite of our desire for control. Amen. Now, amen means let it be so. So for those of you that are here today and you know that you are a person who struggles with that need for control, listen, this is a huge piece of what God wants to do in our lives. Even this morning as you got into your vehicles and were on your way to church today and you got in and you began to look at your front windshield and just like me, you had to pop the trunk and get that scraper out. And you're like, man, this isn't how I wanted my day to go. This isn't how I would have wanted it to to start. Church, there are different aspects in our lives where we desire control for things to play out how we want it to play out. I'm reminded of the story of Job which we will get to as we continue to journey through Heartstrong. But Job is, is this incredible story in the Old Testament of an individual who had much and, and, and lost everything. And eventually he gets to this position where uh, he's been so diligent and, and, and saying, no, like I'm still with God, I'm still with God. And finally he looks around and he says, God, what in the world is going on? How could you take everything from me? We may expect God to respond in, 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 in a warmth or embracing way, but God simply bestows upon Job this deep, deep, deep theological understanding. God says to Job, were you there when everything was formed? Were you present when the light was separated from the darkness? Did you speak creation into being? Church, let us remember today that our God is greater. He is greater. Surrender is, is, is the position where we say, God, I recognize that I am not in control, that I am not the author of this story, this narrative that is taking place, and that everything in creation actually falls under the authority of the king. And that needs to also include our heart. Church, this morning... Who is the king of your heart? Surrendering to Jesus is the settled decision to say, God, you are in charge. But it is also that position that we take every single day. As you read through scripture, you'll see that we are called to be a living sacrifice, to daily remain on the altar, to say, God, today, not my will, but your will be done. God, all the things that I have planned for today, God, I don't want to play these things out in the way that I would do them because I am not the king. And so I release this control to you. Moses finds himself in this position in Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 to 6. As he's going about his day tending his father-in-law's flock, probably has an entire day set out of where he's going to take the flock and how the day is going to go, but God. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses replied, here I am. Then he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place in which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Moses is confronted with the fact that God is present in his story. Church, I want to encourage you this morning. God is present in your story. And today, on this incredible first Sunday in November, he is calling out to you, who is the king of your heart? Who is the king of your heart? Not only did Moses need to recognize that God was wrestling for his day, that God was wrestling with where it was that he would position himself, but he also needs to align himself with the will of the Father. The alignment posture is the outflow of life genuinely surrendered to Jesus. For Moses, this meant trusting that God was king, not Pharaoh. Embracing this truth, he has to align his life to let God use him to lead God's people out of Egypt. Notice how Moses, in the verses that follow, asked God an honest question, but wrong in the alignment wrestle. Exodus chapter 3, verses 9 to 11. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression from which the Egyptians oppressed them. 
Come, God says, and I will send to you, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I is a question that all of us will find ourselves at one time or another asking. Maybe you're here this morning and you felt that challenge from God to go and speak to someone about Christ. Maybe you're here and you felt that just that nudging and that inclination to say, hey, you should go and talk to them. And you're like, me? Like, what? Like, why don't I call my pastor? <laughs> like, why, why don't we see if Pastor Mitch can come and, and uh, you know, Starbucks? And why, of course he just wants to go to Starbucks. Like, why don't I just see if Pastor Mitch wants to come and talk to this guy? Why? Like, maybe you're, you're a high school student today and even over the weekend you were at Strong Conference and you felt God encouraging you that this is the year that he wants to transform your high school. But we often do exactly what Moses did. We begin to bring up the fact that we are not enough. Moses says, who am I? And as you continue, as we have in Heartstrong, uh, you'll see that Moses, he, he says, I'm not eloquent in speech. I have a stutter. I, I've done all of these things. We know that Moses is only currently the shepherd of his father-in-law's uh, flock because he committed murder and hid it as he saw uh, an Egyptian slave master uh, uh, beating one of his Hebrew brothers. Moses presents all of these reasons why he is not qualified. He recognizes that God is in control. He realizes that God is king. But now he needs to align his heart to who God truly is. See, church, who I am is the inferior question. The better question is to begin each and every one of us to do Discover more the one who we follow. Who I am is the inferior question. Who is the I am is the better one. A clear symptom of being out of alignment and following Jesus is this, is that we invite Jesus to follow us rather than say yes to his call to follow him. If surrender concerns who is control, alignment concerns who follows Moses next faces Pharaoh in the Red Sea. He receives the Ten Commandments only to find the people that will be worshiping a golden calf. He can't feed them or lead them through the wilderness. As God forms us, we often mistakenly believe postures of surrender or alignment lead to success when they often lead us to the third posture when it comes to receiving the spiritual authority that God has for us, and that is brokenness. Now, not woundedness. See, brokenness is not to say that you will never be good enough. Brokenness is not simply to look at all the places where you fail. Brokenness in Scripture is the understanding that you on your own are not enough. And that's actually a beautiful place to be, isn't it? This realization that God has not created you to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. That God has not positioned you in this church to be the sole one in charge of watching Canada be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Church, God has placed us all collectively here to come to this clear understanding today that brokenness is where God lovingly refines what we truly rely upon. And brokenness, God means to teach us two interrelated truths. I can't. But in Christ, I can. I can't. But in Christ, I can. We're in a precarious place when we think that we can without God. It will lead us to saying things to individuals that God never intended us to say. It can position us to think that, oh, just more education will allow me to argue my friends into the kingdom of God. Can I encourage you something today? I just want to encourage everybody here. There is nothing wrong with learning more about the gospel. Amen? There is nothing wrong with digging more into scripture. This past weekend at Strong, the speaker who came and was a part of our weekend was a teacher. And he just opened the fire hose and was like, like, it was insane. On the first night, my son and I, 
We were closing the session uh, in hosting, and Sawyer turned to me about 20 minutes into the message, and he's like, Dad, are we going up soon? And I was like, I don't know. I'm taking all the notes. He's still going, and I'm like, I think there's going to be a piano at some point. Like, like, Sawyer, just listen for the piano. We're fine. Like, there was just so much good information. It was rich, and it was challenging. As someone who loves to study more about who God is, who loves to dig into Scripture and and see the things that I've missed all along the way, to, to continue to learn each and every day. Church, it is important for us to grow in knowledge of who God is. But the wisdom as you grow in knowledge is realizing that you will not argue anyone into the kingdom. Hello? You will not argue anyone into the community. Like maybe you're, if you ever seen like one of those like really incredible debates on YouTube, right? Where it's like Christianity versus you fill in the blank, right? Have you ever seen one of those debates end where the person as opposing Christianity goes, never mind, <laughs> I'm good. I don't know why I'm here today, but I submit, I concur, Christ is the way. Have you ever seen it end that way? Not to say that God can't. But nine times out of ten, when you're in an argument with somebody, it becomes really hard to actually hear the other side while you're trying to prove yourself to be true. It is important for us to know. Is it important for us to dig into Scripture? It is important for us to grow in our knowledge of who God is. Because if there's one thing that I can guarantee you today is that the Scripture of God, the Bible that we're reading from today, is defensible in Jesus' name. It is the most scrutinized book of all time. For 2,000 years, people have tried to disprove it, and yet still we are able to stand here on the solid truth that God is who he says that he is, and his son is coming back again soon. Transformation in other people's lives does not come from a simple head knowledge of who God is, but it comes from God piercing the heart combating the darkness, and revealing his light. As we grow in knowledge of Christ, may it also take us to the position to say where we are able to communicate that timeless truth that the more that you know, the more you realize you have no idea. It's one of the most challenging things about Christianity, but also the most beautiful. Some of you are here today and you've been following God for 40 years and are still today learning new things about who he is, who he's made you to be, and what his promises are for you tomorrow. And you will continue to do that until you see him face to face. That's our God. This is how great he is. And so it just allows us to step freely into this position of brokenness to say, God, I am not smart enough. I am not gifted enough. I'm not skilled enough. I'm not good looking enough to convince others of who you are. And church, may you hear those beautiful words to say, I never asked you to be. See, Christ is more than enough. It is him, not us, that people need to see. And so as we dig into this information, as we dig into this knowledge, may it all come from a place of humbly submitting before God to say, God, I just want to know you more so that others can see you clearly. Now that will transform a life. Not being right in an argument, but actually humbling yourself in the midst of that discussion to say, no matter where it is that we leave this place, please know that I love you. And that I am so passionate about what it is that we believe that I'll be here again next week if you want to talk again. And the week after that, and the week after that. Because I know that I know that I know that it's Christ, not me, that you need to hear from. This position of brokenness is not a position of saying, wow, I will never ever get there or or a position of defeat. It is simply allowing ourselves to not only position ourselves in surrender and alignment, but also to release to God the understanding in our own hearts that it is him and not us that will save this world. The final position is that of vulnerability. Vulnerability. 
This posture of vulnerability is, I, is this. I need those who I'm called to serve as much or more than they need me. Oof. I'm going to read that again. The position of vulnerability is this. I need those who I am called to serve as much or more than they need me. One of my favorite things from Strong Conference was on the very first night, uh, we were challenged by our speaker to take on the mantle of a servant. He began to walk through the life of Jesus. The understanding that our Savior came to serve, not to be served. Church, this is our Savior. This is our model. This is who it is that we position our life after. It's to look around this room and to not ask God, what are you going to do for me here today? But God, what is it that you are doing in this community? One of the songs that we sang at Strong Conference, it says, God, I'm not asking you for blessing. Because Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Church, let me remind you today that the reason that we surrender is because our Savior surrendered first. The reason that we align ourselves to Christ is because he showed us that the Son doesn't do anything unless directed by the Father. And so as Jesus aligned his life, his entire life, to the Father, so we are called to also. As Jesus spoke to the disciples, he told them, it is better for me to go. That the Holy Spirit would come, that the Comforter would come to be with you. As he journeyed with his disciples, how many times did he tell them in brokenness, I know that you want me to be here. I know that you have plans of how this should go, but I am going to die. And they all denied it. But Jesus positioned himself in surrender. Jesus positioned himself in alignment. He positioned himself, Christ among us. The powerful words that he spoke, the miracles that, 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 were, that were just playing themselves out in front of the Jewish and Roman people at the time, Jesus also understood in brokenness that there's a bigger issue at play. And only God can heal this. The vulnerability of Jesus gathering 12 disciples to his side. Wow. Like imagine. Jesus, born of a virgin, living a perfect life, understanding he is the son of God. And yet the father tells him, you need to gather 12 individuals and you need to serve them and journey with them and walk with them until the end. I'm called to serve as much or more that I need those who I'm called to serve as much or more than they need me. Church, can we be vulnerable today? And as one admit that on our own, we are not enough. 570 some men at Strong Conference this weekend. And not a single one of them were to walk out of that conference saying, okay, now I got this. It's together. Together. I can't wait to see what God is going to do in this church. If you were at Strong Conference or maybe you weren't at Strong Conference this past weekend, I, I just want to remind each and every one of you that we have an opportunity on Thursday to gather together in this building as men. And you can head on to lifecenter.org slash events and sign up for this incredible opportunity. We're going to gather together for four or five weeks on a Thursday night at 7 and journey through scripture together. 
because we can't do it alone. None of us are meant to go to a conference or attend on a Sunday morning or hear a really good YouTube video about some pertinent information and walk away from that to say, ah, now I got it. Moses had to learn this the entire way. But he was able to conclude his leadership under the full authority of God as he continued to learn and live out a life of surrender, alignment, brokenness, and vulnerability. And so we are called to do also. Surrender is who is really in control of your life. Alignment, who is following you? Are you following or asking Jesus to follow you? Brokenness, what do you really rely on? God or yourself? And the vulnerability, will you admit that you need others to become more like Jesus? This morning, we get to do one of my favorite things. We do this once a month, and that's to gather together at the communion table. And what a better way to close this reminder of how it is that we are called to walk in spiritual authority than to position ourselves once again in a place of remembrance. Mm -hmm.